Hello, FISPA members. This is BJ, and you're here for today's webinar, Managing ATMs Using Internet and On-Premise-Based Remote Control Software. Uh, with me today are Don Vanderwall of Bright Tools and Fred Wheeler of Automated Transaction Delivery. We do have you muted, so if you have questions, please type them in the question box. It's in the webinar control box on your screen, and we've allowed plenty of time at the end of the presentation to answer your questions. We also are recording this webinar, and it will be available on the FSPA website in a day or two. And with that, I would like to turn the presentation over to Don. Thank you, BJ, for that intro. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Don, and I'll be your tour guide. We had a session earlier today, and it went very well. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to having a little bit of your time this afternoon. Most of uh, these sessions that we have start with a presentation of information, and then you end up with a Q&A session at the end. We'll have some Q&A later, but we're going to break with protocol today, and we're going to actually start off our session with a few questions for you to ponder the answers to. For instance, what if you could remotely look at some ATM screens and watch transactions in real time. Today, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to be physically at the ATM so that you could see what these screens look like. Maybe you're at the ATM waiting for the crowd to die down and the line to disappear so that you can log into supervisor mode and resolve some questions. When you're in supervisor mode, you might want to do some reset of errors. You might want to put some new patches or updates into that machine. You may have some network requirements that uh, have changed or need to be altered. And after your reconfiguration, you may need to reboot that ATM and bring it back online and, and see if all your changes are in effect. What if you could do all of those tasks remotely? Maybe part of your service campaign is to provide uh, advertising um, to to the banks. Maybe they have a special deal going. Maybe it's a menu screen that needs to change from uh, Happy Thanksgiving to Merry Christmas. Maybe what you'd like to do is just inform the branches of uh, supply issues with that particular ATM at a particular location. Would it be convenient for you to capture what the hardware is, what parts are installed, what your software inventories look like, what uh, application version is out there, what patch levels are in place, be able to look at all of that without physically having to be standing at that ATM? What if you had a problem and you wanted to do some diagnostics and troubleshooting before you dispatch the field tech to go physically to that ATM. Would that be useful to you? What about if you wanted to retrieve a log file or grab an e-journal or get a status list and send that to the support person before they actually left to go service that ATM? What if you could do all of those things and never ever once fail a PCI audit? If you nodded, you had an agreement, or came up with some answers to some of these questions, then you are probably in the right place today because you're dealing with the kinds of service activities and you understand uh, the cost of business in servicing those things. These types of service costs are, um, are, are common. And when you're taking a look at the cost of doing business, uh, bank calls, financial institution calls, their machine is down, you have to dispatch somebody to go on site, they have to take a look and see if this is a minor reset or if there's a part that needs to be replaced. You may carry a few parts with you because you know what that customer's hardware looks like and you know that it's notorious for uh, this part or that, um, but until you get there you don't really know what it needs and if you don't have that part, you have to make a second trip, first to go out and get it and bring it back, and then to bring this machine back online. There's a cost associated with all of this, and it's a pretty expensive process. So 
if you are able to address those with a remote control product, it would actually decrease your operational costs. Now I've got some numbers in here, some actual metrics from a customer who you'll be hearing from a little bit later, who was able to use this software to reduce their service calls by 70%, eliminate 90% of their second trips, and eliminate arriving with the wrong part by 95%. And really, time is money. The quicker you can get these machines back online, uh, the happier your customer is going to be and the more money that they can make, that they can spend on you. But this software isn't something that just helps you to decrease your operational cost. It can also be used to increase your revenue streams. It opens up an opportunity for you to offer additional services. The screen delivery I mentioned earlier, doing patch management to, to machines. Instead of having to physically go to everyone individually and taking a week to update all of your customers' machines, you could push these out electronically and update them all on the same day. Settlement is also an issue that you can help uh, your customers with. Somebody reports a machine that's giving out the wrong denominations, you can go into that machine and take a look at the transactions before and after their complaint and see if there's a problem or if they're trying to pull one on you. So how does all that work? To explain it in simple terms, I'm going to start with a simple network diagram. We've got an on-site server. This is a TCP uh, connection. It's been in place for 10 years or more. I've got customers who have embraced our technology for a decade, and they have the, the, the classic or traditional on-site server connected through TCP. In addition to that, I'm also going to introduce to you a cloud service today. It gives you the same capabilities, but what I want you to come away with is that it's not an either-or situation. We can actually put together a hybrid configuration that meets your particular requirements for a particular customer. So in some cases, it might be a TCP connection. In some cases, it might be a cloud. You have control, total control over both of those. Let's expand on that just a little bit more. In your TCP world, you will have a piece of software that gets installed on an ATM. You have another piece of software that gets installed on your workstation back at your office. These two pieces of software will communicate using TCP in a secured manner over a, a private network. Once this connection is made, once a person is, is authorized, um, they have capabilities and functions available to them. These are advanced monitoring tools. We're going to actually show you what these look like here in a few minutes. And this is a, a, the, the classic traditional methodology that um, customers have been using for a decade. The cloud service is very, very similar. It has a slightly different look and feel, but the same functionality. A little bit of a different look and feel because not only do you have a desktop application, but you also have the ability to access the network through a Chrome browser, so now you're mobile. So why would that be important to you? Well, let's take a look at your three options of maintaining an ATM. Option number one, put somebody physically at the ATM, and realistically, you will still have to do that for some things. You can't change a part out using software. But um, you don't have to go to the ATM for all of your uh, services. You could go from your desktop app and reach out from your office without ever having to get into a, a truck or service car and drive to a location. And now with the, with a Chrome browser, you now have some mobility. Now you could do that work from home instead of from the brick and mortar office that you drive to every day. Or more importantly, you might be physically at an ATM on the east side of town and get a call for help at an ATM on the west side of town. And using your mobile approach here, you could connect to that ATM in a disparate location from the current job site that you're currently located at. 
that gives you a bunch of flexibility in maintaining services to your customers. There's some other benefits besides mobility though, and I want to talk about those for just a moment. One is that the cloud service is a software as a service offering. It's a license or a subscription versus a purchase that you would normally do with, with your traditional TCP uh, license. So you have an annual subscription for every ATM you want to connect to. And then if you're in the field, you have that other corresponding piece of software installed on all of your field machines. If you were to purchase this, you would buy a piece of software for every ATM and for every field machine. And that, that number can grow or, or decrease as you uh, add or, or take away customers. Annual subscription, you're locked in for a 12-month period. Also with the cloud, you've got your own network services. Let me break that down for you a little bit. We have some large customers today. I've got a customer that has over 50,000 ATMs on their, their network. And as part of that effort, they have to scale that network. They have to have a, um, skilled tech come in to help manage it and feed this beast. They have to worry about things like disaster recovery and how to do load balancing efforts. All of that is covered for you when you go with a cloud service and that network layer is managed by a third party. And security is also something I want to bring up here real quick. You're going to go to a secure domain. You can do it with a desktop app, like I mentioned, or through a browser. All of your controls that you had in the in the classic uh, connection through TCP IP is available to you, you know, through a cloud service, including that ability to be to be mobile. You can still get your hardware and software inventories. You can actually deploy pre -con pre configured cloud modules out to your customers. Now I highlighted secure for a very important reason. Uh, when you go to talk to people and you tell them that you want to put software on your network and and it's going to be secure. Everybody's got a few doubts about that. So let's just address that up front. First, we'll take a look at the myth about cloud security. This is not what I have in mind when I say that uh, there's no security with a cloud service. Security is mind over matter. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter, right? That, that's wrong. There's a lot of big players in the industry right now, Oracle, Microsoft, uh, Apple all have huge cloud services. IBM, um, they all provide a very secure, very high speed cloud presence that gives you all the security you need in, in PCI compliance to service your ATM customers. So what I'm talking about here on the PCI side is section 12.3.9. We have a software product that does not interfere with the ATM software that's installed on the ATM, and it uses a subnet that has strict limited access and functionality. This requirement is um, applicable to both your classic TCP or to a cloud network um, access. Really you need just two components like I mentioned before. You've got a module that's installed on an ATM. This is configured with password access. That password is encrypted. There are a couple different ways of uh, using the encryption. The person who will create or delete it cannot modify it, and that person is usually not a field person who has the password provided to them for access into a machine. For access into that machine, they'll need to have that control piece, and then once they're connected, they have a, uh, a list of functions available to them. In the Windows environment, you've got admin rights and you've got guest privileges. Uh, I'll use that analogy here. You could actually give some guest privileges to your customers if they wanted to go out and do their own inventories. Or you could have admin functions reserved just for your field techs so that if you need to go in and change screens or do patch management, only they would have that functionality available to them. Um, 
a real uh, real case study here for a second. Um, I'm on the phone with a tech from a financial institution. They're actually a customer now. I'm not going to mention who they are. We Before they're a customer, they're a prospect. And it started with a conversation with the tech people. They in, were in love with what we could do for them from a technical standpoint. The next step in that process was to bring in um, members of, uh, of uh, the board. And as we're going into our into our presentation, I have uh, an interruption from a guy who introduces himself as the director of security. And the question was, who said we have a network? Who told you that we have one? And who said you, we could, you could put your software on it? <laughs> so there's always going to be someone who's going to deny they even have a network, let alone uh, wants to give you access to it. These are things that can get addressed. We can help you with that. Um, but that's a true story. So one quick look at uh, comparing a cloud service to the classic TCP. Both of them are going to give you secure functionality. One's going to use a private network and one will use the cloud network. The cloud network represents a lower cost for you. I kind of liken it to the difference between new Coke and classic Coke. Now, we could have an argument about which one tastes better, but there is no argument that they're both Coke. And that's really what we have here with a cloud service network versus access to a private network. So quick summary here. This is how it works. We take software that's installed on your PC or smart device. We take software that's installed on your customer's ATM, or it could be your ATM if you lease it to them. And then we connect those two pieces of software over a private network or over an internet connection. And we can come up with a hybrid solution that really does a little bit of both. And that's what we're going to show you right now. I'm really pleased to have Fred Wheeler with us today. What Fred has done is put together a solution that um, uses other technologies, but ours is at the heart of it. And, uh, and Fred has graciously offered to show you uh, our software running live on his machine. Fred, you there? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, Tom. Um, thanks for the intro. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, again, Don asked me to uh, demonstrate uh, uh, the Bright Tools uh, remote control solution. And I said, not a problem. It's, uh, it's very good. It does um, take a big part of what we do as a managed service provider. That's what ATD does. Um, we actually build cloud servers, and that's what we're in right now is one of our cloud servers, um, to, to make functionality on devices work. So um, so just some, some quick a quick overview of what we can do. Real easy to connect um, to a device. Um, these are running wireless. Um, this machine is actually about 70 miles from where I'm sitting right now, um, all, all operating wirelessly. Um, you can look at all the screens, um, upsize them, downsize them. Um, this, this is actually an MX8800 uh, remote video teller machine. So it does have three screens. We can see all three screens, see what uh, we're playing on the marketing screen. Again, the user, user screen, and of course, the service panel. So the first, first way we use um, this remote control software is we actually get calls from the network. We, we take the client, the financial institution, out of the picture. Um, when we get the call from the network and from our Gasper system that says there's an issue with an ATM, we don't send a tech. The first thing we do is we go in and look at the machine and see where there's faults. And on this Yosung machine, it would light up bright red um, if there was an issue. So the next thing that we would do is we go in it remotely and this tool allows us um, to remotely uh, go into any ATM and manage that machine just like you're standing in front of it. That's what we like about this. It's wide open technology. Um, so again, we can go in and look at the device status um, of a machine. We can pull the errors. We can get the logs out of the machine. Um, take the journals. So 
But on a service event, let's say we want to run diagnostics, a lot of time, you know, when, when there's a, a media jam, um, we just run the diagnostics on it um, and it will actually clear itself. On the technical side, when we do have to dispatch a technician um, anywhere in the country, we run machines all, all over the uh, eastern half of the United States today, um, we send them with an educated solution. In other words, um, one of our engineers actually takes a look at the machine and let's say it's a, it's a bill dispenser issue. Uh, we can go into the BRM. This is actually a recycler in this machine. It's just the only recycling ATM in the world. Um, we can go ahead and initialize it or we can do this. We can show the status where we can pull us off of NCRs, D-bolts, um, and he suns And if you've ever run this, this is the actual machine and you would see through a red indication on the sensors, that's where the problem is. So when we do dispatch a field tech, he goes with this picture in his hand, saying this is this is where the issue is, um, and what to look for, and go ahead and fix that. And then at the end of the end of the service event, um, we go ahead and sorry, we we go ahead and, and run the test on the machine again, just to make sure that everything's fine, and that is without leaving. Um, our control centers here in uh, here in Florida and uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so our team can do that. Um, while this machine is is coming up, one of the things you can do again with the machine live running transactions, you can do an inventory of it. So if there's an upgrade that has to be done on the machine, if you're still doing EMV or Windows 7, um, and Windows 10 is coming down the road, uh, you can look at all the hardware that's on that device what that PC has, does it have enough RAM, does it have a good uh, network adapter, video adapter. Software, what's the software that's in there and, and what version is it? This is the latest and greatest. Right now, um, if you play with ATM software, there are certain versions of software that have issues with different networks. So you can go in and look and see what they are. We can look at the hot fixes we've put on this, this device um, so far. Um, the applications that are running running processes and, and services. One of the issues that we've seen um, with the, uh, the, the, the software to, to capture um, images and send them to our consolidation server, that agent um, sometimes stops running. So we can go and look at uh, what processes are, uh, are running and what processes are stopped and go ahead and start it back up again. Um, we can print this inventory again, to have it for, for a sales role or, or consulting with a client to do upgrades. Um, let me just do this. So again, you know, I'm, I'm running this machine just like I was standing behind it. We can reboot it, um, do anything we want to. Uh, the file transfer function comes in handy um, if you want to um, go ahead. Let's say you wanted to pull it pull an EJ. Um, it's just as easy. The bottom here is, is the machine. I'm actually in the machine's files right now. And if you want to pull an EJ to do Reg E research for, for a client like we do, we, all, we do all our Reg E. It's as easy as doing this. We just told it to copy that EJ out of that ATM and put it someplace where we can use it on our cloud server. Um, it's that quick. And then we can go in and do reggae research. Um, any other files, if you want to do file updates, um, you can transfer files from um, the PC, whatever PC you're using. Ours is actually a cloud server, um, down to the machine or the other way. Uh, makes it really easy to put in marketing screens um, and, and, again, do software patches and software updates. Uh, this machine is going to come up here in just a second just to demonstrate the fact that uh, this will do um, any PC. Um, this is a remote teller machine that we have that we're working on. Um, in that remote, remote teller is an actual laptop, um, a teller workstation that we get into. We can actually go in and look at that and do the exact same thing, help a client. Um, 
with their machine and, and, and with uh, the remote teller, make sure the video is working right, make sure everything's working right. And as soon as this little guy decides to come up live, uh, this is a, a, a teller cache recycler, TCR built into it. So it takes a little while to go in and, uh, and look at all the devices. But uh, it should finish here in a second. Um, I'll demonstrate some of the advantages here. There we go. Um, again, looking at the screen, we can see exactly what's going on with the machine when it's communicating. Um, again, with the Hyosung, and when it comes back up live, and it's about to do that in just about a second here. This is a live functioning device right now that's in our lab. Um, so again, if we want to test remote teller functionality, we can actually do that from here by making a call. to the machine and then accepting it. And right now, the screen is being a little cranky. There we go. So again, we can answer a call, a video call, and check the video and, and test any of the functionality. And, and again, it works on almost any PC. You can see the video here. And if we go back to Mr. ATM, we can actually look at monitor one and see the video going both ways. And again, watch the transaction. So don't want to run this all day for you folks, but we can test test that functionality. So it uh, works on anything that's Windows based, NCR, C bolts. Um, it works uh, for CE, anything that's CE based. Um, so again, it's, it's a great tool that we use and we really like. It's lowered our, our uh, management costs and given us the ability to work with clients um, all over. Like I said, we're in the eastern half of the United States right now. Um, we'll do upgrades and, and change functionality on machines in Tennessee without even ever leaving the office. So at that, um, does anyone have any questions at this point? I'm not seeing any questions. There's um, any of you attendees want to ask any questions? Now's your chance. While we're waiting for a couple of questions, I'm going to jump back in here with a couple more thoughts to share. One here is that Fred just demonstrated his ability to reach out across many miles and touch a device, and um, and I do that actually myself. I'm in our Michigan office. Corporate headquarters is in uh, Boca Raton, and uh, it's not unusual for me to uh, connect every day from Michigan to Florida and run applications on a server at corporate headquarters. Uh, it's not an ATM, but it's the same same type of functionality that I would use that Fred is using to um, up, do updates, run applications, send out information from from corporate as if I was actually virtually right there in in the room. So you can um, you can expand your reach, expand your territory beyond the the 40 mile radius or the 50 mile radius of, of your hometown using the software. So you're you're not limited right now by by a geographic boundary. Another thing that Fred uh, was kind enough to point out is that if it runs Windows and that includes CE this software will interact with it. So if you were considering expanding your business model to include uh, maybe security systems or video closed caption or closed circuit systems uh, or anything that has a machine that's on the network that runs Windows, this is a product that will help you manipulate those devices. Now with the cloud offering, we're not limited to just Windows. There's a lot of devices coming over from across the pond in Europe that are embracing um, non-Windows operating systems. And we are running successfully on Samsung and, uh, and Linux devices. Uh, we can support Macs. Um, 
there's a bunch of them that we're already in, in progress with. So if those are devices that you're running up against and this is a, a uh, potential fit for you, would love to have you uh, start a conversation with me and I can show you even more about what we're doing. But today was designed to show you uh, what we have for a virtual tech solution. Today was supposed to be an introduction to what uh, remote control is all about and whether it can be done over a, a uh, classic network or a cloud-based system. And if we I do have, have a question. We do have a question, Don, about um, from Chuck Heatherly. Our financial institutions have issues with granting access through their firewalls. Do you have documentation showing the system security? Uh, yes, I can get you documentation on that, and it, that's not a uncommon. Um, a non-common hurdle that you're going to have to, to jump over a little bit. Some people do not want you on their network, period, end of story. Um, there is a provision within PCI rules to allow a third party to come in. It's all very well documented. Um, and if, that, uh, if that's part of the conversation, we can point out how we meet those requirements. Some people put in a, uh, a subnet and they access it via VPN. And it is uh, restricted to just that device with limited capabilities, which is absolutely fine. Um, it, it's a minimal intrusion, and it's on an ad-needed basis, or it can be set up for 24-7 with, um, with, with callback. There's so many variations on how to do this that I don't want to get down into the technical weeds on this call. The quick answer is yes. Uh, let's take that conversation offline because every customer you, you have is going to have um, uh, their, their viewpoint on this, and we can help you with those answers. Yeah, the, uh, the ATD solution, what we do is we actually run our own network, so we don't integrate anything into any FI of what we do for transaction delivery. So that's kind of how we, we work uh, with and around that. Any other right. my, go, another question? No, that seems to be all the questions we have. So okay. um, again, if you want to see this running, you can come to the Las Vegas conference. You knew I was going to put a plug in for that. Um, May 17th through 20th at Bally's, and uh, Fred will be in booth 411, automated transaction delivery in the exhibits on Saturday. Um, so you can actually see this live. It's pretty impressive. I got to see it at ATMIA. And if you um, think of any other webinars or anything else you would like to see, just let me know. These webinars are, are a benefit of being a member of FSPA. Today you got to see this Bright Tools remote software from your desk, which is pretty cool. So thank you again, everybody, for spending the time with us today. And I uh, thank you and hope you have a great afternoon. Don, Fred, do you have anything you'd like to add? Don, do you get your contact information? I'll put that up on the screen here real quick if you... Thank you. Um... Just a quick word on support here. If you need some help giving demonstrations to clients or addressing your licensing issues, give me a call. I'm the sales manager, Bright Tools Corporation. There's my toll-free number and extension. You can reach out to me. I'd be happy to have a conversation with you. Uh, we also offer technical support, and, uh, <laughs> and that's live as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> if... Uh, if you found this to be of use to you, uh, thank you for your time. If you would be kind enough to uh, help me put some uh, virtual uh, hands together and make a virtual applause for BJ for her help in helping this get set up for me today, and uh, another applause for Fred in uh, showing us what he has been doing with our product over in his neck of the woods, I would appreciate that. 
we have customers that have a handful of ATMs. My largest customer in the United States has over 50,000 uh, ATMs running our software. If you'd like to have a, uh, another conversation about this or continue with the discussion on licensing, please get in touch with me and we'll have that discussion. Otherwise, thank you very much for your time today and have a blessed day. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great afternoon.